this is Rob Power and today in Tech Turbo Talks we're talking to Gino Mader of Entity Pro Cycling about the digital Swiss 5. Alright, welcome listeners. It's a new episode of the Tech Turbo Talks. There's no outdoor racing yet for a couple of months unfortunately. But we've all got our fingers crossed that we will see the updated UCI calendar go ahead as it is planned for later on in the year. And perhaps our guest of today um, will also then get an opportunity to make his Grand Tour debut. But for now, let's check in how he's doing after his virtual racing debut yesterday in his uh, basically his home race, the Digital Swiss 5. So welcome on the podcast, the young talented NTT pro cycling rider Gino Mader. Welcome Gino, how are you feeling? Yeah, I'm feeling great, feeling great, thanks. Was it the toughest hour of, in your career so far yesterday? Well, it was surely the the one hour with the highest power output. Um, but I've been suffering a lot more on the bike already. Okay, so, so the highest power output, you uh, you had like all the alerts popping up like in training peaks or which platform are you guys are using? Yeah, we are on today's plan and I had like best power numbers on 20 minutes for this year and like on, on the hour where i was way above everything i've ever done <laughs> and the heart rate as well oh uh, heart rate was 192 for an hour so <laughs> wow it must be because you're still so young that you can get it up uh, that high that heart rate yeah it must be but when i see all the other guys at like 168 i feel a bit like a rabbit you know <laughs> 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 did it did it feel like being a rabbit for an hour just spinning spinning oh. spinning you know i don't really know the the name of the animals in uh, english but the one that always runs in a wheel it was yeah, a bit little, like this mouse or, or a rat yeah exactly yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it was great experience so it's a it's a bit of a strange home race for you the digital uh, swiss five did it actually feel like like you were on swiss roads while you were riding uh actually i ha- i have super nice neighbors so they've set up a banner with my name on it just when i look out of the window and they painted the road outside of the other window so it was really like a home race <laughs> what what did it say on the banner uh, it's just uh in german go chino and it's it's huge like maybe two meters on six meters two on six meters so it's a huge banner just ahead of my window and the whole road is painted so it's <laughs> <laughs> it's it's to the swiss like it is all right that's awesome you probably should share something about that on social media the fans would love to see that i reckon yeah they they absolutely would but it was a bit difficult to take a picture yesterday but fortunately Fortunately, it's uh, still set up, so <laughs> I take and, that today. And you're gonna get another chance on the stage five one. Is that Sunday? I think it is. It's Sunday, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so the digital Swiss Five is basically a race of uh, the proto teams all having like three uh, riders in the virtual racing world again on the Rufi platform. Uh, it really looked like you were out on the Swiss roads. At least the people who were watching at home record could definitely recognize it as the Swiss uh, roads. Did it actually feel like it as well in terms of the the gradients, etc., the climbing? Um, I guess it helps to be on a tax because the feeling is actually really road like. I mean, you don't really have to, you know, the wind when you're riding, but except of this, it feels as hard. Did you have like a special preparation for for the Swiss Five? Um, we had a few Swift races with the team um, to get to get to know the actual effort a bit, and then it was just um, on the day itself. I did an easy, faster ride ahead of breakfast. Then, uh, like like a normal uh, individual time trial day, uh, it was really the warm-up protocol I will do on a TT day and everything just just as if it is a time trial. So, yeah, proper race preparation. Did you get a, a little bit of a taper for it as well? Like the day before, took it easy or it was just in a regular training? Yeah, we really try to simulate it in the Swift races we've done. So we tried a bit uh, some t- different things and 
yeah, sure, we adapted the training a bit to be as fresh as needed and to have the muscle tonus that really helps me to, to get the most out of it. So, yeah, we took it serious. And now I think that I read already after yesterday, after the stage, that you said you still had like contact with the team leader who was giving instructions, etc. during the race as well. Is that true? Yeah, I was uh, I was on the phone with my coach, Kieran O'Grady, all the time. And he saw my power output in real time and he he got some information from me as well during the race. So we really try to have you know, like a time trial with su super in super many informations for him as he saw my heart rate, my power output, the gradient I gonna tackle. And yeah, I had it, I had him in my ear for the whole time also to cheer me up a bit. And what work did he give some instructions? And what were those um, instructions? Yeah, as. As it's really a power to weight race, um, we had a pacing strategy a strategy for the diff different gradients. So whenever a gradient change came up, um, I also tried to adapt my my power output to get the the most out of it, the most efficient way to ride up. So he was actually focused on this, and I was focused focused on suffering <laughs> and was he on the phone on the same time as, uh, as well with, with ben and louis your teammates or i think they all had their individual coaches on and i'm i'm not sure too sure we didn't have contact after yesterday's stage or <laughs> after yesterday's race um but now nah, he was only on the phone with me okay so I guess like because it's such an individual event that you're doing it from home that it didn't really feel that you helped Ben towards the top five yesterday. <laughs> I, I'd wish I could uh, take benefit of, of his uh, place, but that was actually only himself. <laughs> All right. And then the, the next couple of days, um, the terrain for Sunday's race, stage five is the last one that you're doing again. Is, is there something that you've learned from from yesterday did you think okay that's what that's what i can apply for sunday when i'm going again yeah i guess i now really know a bit more about my actual performance level which is really going to help as um the pacing strategy is, is going to be much more um closer to what i'm actually able to push out um but then it's still it's still a race and you you see the other guys uh, riding away from you and there's there's no way you're going to stay with your power when you see everybody going full gas. So you go full gas as well. So, <laughs> I don't think I'm really, you know, able to learn something. It's it's still a race and I still feel like racing when I see th these guys going. Yeah, uh, I think you still picked up quite a few riders at the end, didn't you? I think because you made your way up a little bit near the end. Yeah, I was... I was conservative in the beginning and I was like after 1.1 K at the first split, I was at position 42, I guess, something around that. And then I was really able to hold the power steady throughout the ride. So now it was a well-paced effort and I did see some guys coming back from the front. So that was a nice feeling. <laughs> All right. And I saw for, um, for Sunday, actually, there's actually going to be a climb in there again as well, but then there's going to be a long descent. Now, I know that you are uh, quite a sort of like a specialist on attacks on long descents. You might need to practice that for Sunday then as well. To do it again, <laughs> yeah, uh, it's, a, it's a 15K climb, so I reckon it's an, around 40 minutes climbing. <clears throat> and then it's a, like a really long downhill, so... I may see if I get some aero benefits on the on the <laughs> trainer, but <laughs> is that your usual tactic to get as aero as possible on the downhills? And that is that your secret in the way that you've been able to attack in the past? Um, yeah, to ha like actually having a look to the to the races I've been doing or where I have my best results, it was al always an attack in the downhill, and I really feel like. I, I can get super aero on the bike um, with no power output 
and that I mean that surely helps to be arrow and we can ask Victor about but uh, yeah it's from learning from experience and when I was a little kid um, like 11 years old and we had the restricted gears I was always riding with my dad in the downhills he was always pulling away and I I had to find a way to stay on his wheel so the only way to do it was either spin 180 rpm or get as arrow as possible <laughs> you mentioned the name of victor one of the more experienced uh, teammates at ntt um what do you learn from those guys you're still obviously yeah you're still young it's your second year with the team uh, what can you learn from those guys uh, especially talking about victor he's so dedi- dedicated on his gt performances it's incredible to see him get ready for for an event and everything he he puts into plan to to get the best result possible and he's really a detail focused guy and he he actually knows so much and he has so, so much experience that he's all also willing to share which makes him a, a great lad i mean there's one there's it's one thing to know stuff but it's another thing to share the things you know and that's something you can really learn from Victor or for from Roman Kreuziger as well as he has so much experience he knows everything and you just go and ask him yeah it's I mean that's awesome and if you look at last year you were still like in a in a in the team with uh, with Kev what's the main thing that you learned from him last season <laughs> to still oh, have no, fun the after <laughs> like to still having fun on the races after such a long time and even if he wasn't particularly successful in the like the last two or let's say three years he was still having fun at the races and he was still the champion he is but the same applies for bernie eisel as example he's a super experienced rider and he knew everything about sprinting. I'm not really the guy that's going to go into the sprints, but if I can help the team to set up a sprint, I'm really willing to do so. And he was, he was actually like, you know, a huge book filled with experience and knowledge that he was willing to share. And he, he teached me so much in such little time that I, I'd say if it's going to be a sprint, I can really help the team now. It must be great having like, yeah, those experienced guys around you on the team. Was there, when you were younger, did you have like a certain idol that you were looking up to as well? As like maybe those guys have been for other people? Um, I did, but uh, I'm not even sure you know about him. It's a track rider, uh, Bruno Risi. Yeah, he was like... Him. Was he riding he with like, Fully a lot or not? Yeah, exactly. He had like the record on six-day victories with uh, Kurt Betscheid. And when I was a little kid, I always went to the six-day in Zurich. And it was such a privilege to see him there. And I remember one evening going to him and he was eating some cake, like, uh, yeah, a cake in between the races. I asked him for a picture and he said, yeah, I come in, I'm going to show you around a bit. And it was like so friendly and really like showing me the six day business a bit. And uh, that, that's like an experience I <laughs> I will not forget soon. And he was he was like the biggest rider for me. So you still have that photo now. Do you have an autograph as well? Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> do you still know where it is? Yeah, I do. I do. I I keep it in a place where I have access to it. And, you know, some, di- some days when you actually feel a bit down or you have motivation uh, motivation problem for training, you go and you see the little kid next to, to a champ like him and you're like, okay, I'd like to be the champ for a little kid as well. And do you know, sometimes realize as well that maybe like in a couple of years that there's a whole new young Swiss generation with yourself, Mark Ishii, maybe Stefan Bischke as well, that there could be like a young generation looking up to you guys like that? Uh, I hope so. I mean, to see the progression that 
Swiss cycling and you know the Swiss yeah really Swiss cycling took the last few years when I remember we had I mean we had Sylvain Dillier and then there was Stefan Kung but it was always one of a you know in every year there was only one and then when 2018 we did all the nation cups in in that formation we had back then with Hirschi, me, um, Patrick Müller, who unfortunately had to retire. But we were suddenly we've been racing the races to win, and there was not a question if we want to win, but how we're gonna win. And to see that change in the in the mentality of the Swiss riders was actually really awesome and something that motivates you as well when you go out for training and you know okay i can really be someone in the race and not just fill up the result list and i really hope that we're gonna stay in the same um in the same drive and that we can make an impact also in professional cycling if you look at like professional cycling last year was your first year on the world tour um you were pretty open to say, okay, this was not the season that I was hoping for, uh, or maybe, maybe even pretty harsh on yourself, not the season where I showed why I belong in the world tour. Um, what was it that was going to change for you this year or what is still going to change for you? How do you look at 2020? Yeah. I mean, there's, there's been a crash in Vuelta Catalonia where I broke my wrist and then I lost a bit of, of the side and to see all all the other young guys Sivakov um, Bogochar Benal Sosa all these guys they were really performing last year and you kind of sit at home and you think should I belong there? Yes I think so why am, am I not there? yeah the broken wrist but what else? so I had a great first race in Argentina and then everything fall apart a bit i was like okay that's that's not really why i'm professional cyclist i really wanted to take the first year as an opportunity to learn and all the things i've learned last year i wanted to implement in this year and which means adapting your training routine adapting a bit what you eat when you eat how you eat and all these little things that i've learned last year i'm not going to get into the details too much but it was it was really one year just learning experience and to get the stuff right this year and i'm i'm still doing so i'm still trying so and mo- motivation to to keep on working on myself is really high even if we can't race and we can't really prove that i learned something but as soon as we race again we're going to see so for for 2020, did you have some specific goals, specific races where you thought, okay, this is where I want to show uh, who Gino Meda actually is on the pro scene? I had uh, two different races. One was uh, I was planned to do the Giro. So doing my first Grand Tour <laughs> would have been a huge privilege for me and what I've always been dreaming about and also to show that I'm able to race consistent over three weeks. That was like my first big goal. And the second one was the Swiss championships in time trialing to show that you do not have to be a huge guy to at least fight with Stefan King. If I can beat him, that's a different story. But to also learn how to get arrow and everything, that was my second goal. Okay. It still is. Yeah. Are the Swiss nationals already postponed or cancelled or? Uh, They are postponed um but there's i mean yeah i really hope that they're gonna be held place and if not they just have to be as good that i'm gonna do the words no problem no problem <laughs> <laughs> and then obviously the giro in uh what is it october yeah i mean does it really change something about the weather or about the race <laughs> It's a different time of the year, yes, but um, still the the classics at the end of the year, they always have been in September, even October. So I think it, it, can, be a, it can be a huge success as well for the Chiro. It can be 
a lot different, of course, that's that's for sure. But um, the race itself, I think it's still going to be, it's still going to be the Giro, we all know. And you've had some pretty solid racing at the uh, at the end of the year, September, October, especially 2018, with the Worlds coming forth in the under-23 and then Hainan. So it shouldn't be a problem for you. No problem indeed. Yeah, I've I've always been going better at the end of the year than at the beginning of the season, but um, <laughs> we, we will see how, how it's going to be this year. Are there still maybe somewhere a little bit of nerves or something that you have to prove yourself as well as this is your final contract year with NTT? Yes, it is. I mean, for sure. And there's a saying in Switzerland that you're always as good as your last race. So when you when you when you're racing and you have a good race, that's gonna give you motivation for the next coming weeks where you where you're training for the next race. But when you had a really bad result and you're kind of frustrated and you you have to prove yourself again and you have to prove yourself in every single race and that's what i love about cycling as well it's you're only as good as your last race so you're always consistently fighting and and if you look at your career maybe after 2020 um what would be sort of like the goal how do you see yourself develop as a rider what type of rider I'm always, I, I've always been dreaming about being a GC contender, and when when I when I have a look at the under 23 race scene, when I was really having a goal like Lavenir, then Worlds, and then I had the Hainan, I was always able to perform at these goals, and I think. That may be something really interesting for the future as well to have some goals in a, in a season and really prepare them well. And um, let's say I may be a bit too young and not having the experience for a Grand Tour, but a one week race, really preparing well and developing into that kind of GC contender. That's uh, that's what I'm dreaming about. Uh, yeah, you would say it, it might be in there. This uh, you don't get third in the Tour de l'Avenir um, out of the blue, probably when a Pogacar is waiting. So, yeah. Um, we're moving on to the Tech Turbo Talks fan question of the week. Each week we've got questions coming in for our guests. So this week was the same. Um, usually I ask the question, uh, I'll say who the question was from and then ask the question. But this time I want to ask the question and then yeah. you can guess who asked the question. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so the question was, what is your greatest win? Apart from the Grand Prix Oberwangen in 2009. Oh, I have no idea, actually. It, it is a colleague of yours. Is it, is it Mar Mario Spengler? No, it is. He, he, no. Write, he writes for Movistar at the moment. Ah, Johan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> JJ. <laughs> uh, I think my, my biggest win and... Johan, I hope you listen, was a uh, Frauenfeld. I didn't actually win, but Johan asked me to let him win. And he was he was so much stronger than me. He was just riding away and I was saying, yeah, yeah, I let you win. So the biggest win was that he was afraid of me. <laughs> and when was that? <laughs> oh, that was when we've been 10 years old. Oh, wow. So 13 years back. Yeah, that was like, he was, you know, he was the hero of Swiss racing scene back then. He was winning everything. And then suddenly he was afraid of me. So, <laughs> <laughs> And that's when you won. Uh, what's the story about the uh, Grand Prix Oberwangen in 2009? I actually, I have to think about. Because um, you must have been 12 then. Yeah, it, it, it must it must be the race where <laughs> we we all have been on the podium and uh, two of the three guys had to draw up on the podium <laughs> because it was quite a tough race. I think, uh, yeah, it must be that one. <laughs> That's awesome. All right, uh, I'll just do one more uh, f from another fan question. Um, and you touched on it a little bit already, but it was from George uh, Sofrenu, and he wanted to know, how do you find that motivation to keep training 
uh, either indoors or outdoors, I think you can still train a bit of uh, outdoor as well in Switzerland. Um, yeah, we but can. how do you find that motivation when you don't know when or if some races will take place at the moment? Uh, I mean, to that question, I'm not only a, you know, I'm not only a, a, a race rider. I'm I'm just a bike rider as well, and I I love to be on the bike as as we all do. I mean, all cyclo tourists and everybody out there who's not having a goal for a race, but he's still having a goal for himself. Uh, if if the goal is just to enjoy nature and to see how how spring is waking like everything up, and you go out there and you you have the smell of spring and you have you have the feeling of freedom on the bike and it's not always about your performance. It's not always about how many watts you can push out and uh, yeah, like what's your power to weight ratio. Those are things most of the time I'm not interested in the, in them and I just enjoy being on the bike and enjoy having the, the opportunity to take, to take some of the best material in the world out out there and just ride along and see yeah see one of the most beautiful countries um in the world i think that that should be motivation enough and then i'm still being paid to be a bike rider i mean uh, that's one other huge privilege and i i wouldn't say it's a job but it's something you also have to do so there's not really a choice, but I don't really want to have another choice than that, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, it perfectly makes sense. I think it's a great answer for everyone just to, it's not, like you said, not always about the race, but sometimes take the time to enjoy uh, just being out there and riding your bike as well. Does it even maybe give more meaning for you uh, being on this particular team since the cause behind it? <laughs> yeah, I mean... Uh, I had the opportunity to see to see a school in South Africa and to see the the pleasure they had when they got their bikes, you know. And I was getting a new bike as well on the same in the same week. And if I compare the pleasure they had to to receive a Buffalo bike bike, and when I had my BMC bike, that was it was similar, but for them it was more of a, like a life changing experience. And I mean, the bike has changed my life as well, but when I think about this, I, I just know I have to be grateful for everything I have. And I really, I really enjoy the opportunities I've been given. So yeah, that's, that's one meaning of, of the bike for me. And you say the bike has been life changing for you. Um, if, if we're going to look a bit further back in your career, there was a certain moment of red that you decided you wanted to become a professional, and it was a pretty important moment in your life. Uh, it had a lot, had a big impact, and you jumped on the indoor trainer on the rollers, and that was that was when you decided I'm going to be a professional. Can you share something about that? Or yeah, uh, yeah, I made it was winter, and like yeah, you know, you, you know how it is ahead of of an evening and everything was a bit like the mood was really a bit down. And then my dad shared that he would like to divorce. And I was like, okay, and that's, <laughs> that's bad news. I already knew back then that that's bad news, but I was also really like thinking all the day that I, I, I want to do a training, but I wasn't really feeling to go on their indoor trainer. And I was, ah, I was suffering the day and then when he when he opened and he said okay he he would like to have the, the um divorce I was saying okay and now I just have to do something to get you know to let the emotions go I jump on the indoor trainer and I I did 1 hour full gas just everything I could <laughs> a bit like yesterday and I was always thinking okay now this is it. I I want to become a professional cyclist to have them both on the road. To have them both, you know, still with me and that they can still be proud of of who I am and of who they raised. So that was really an evening 
I mean, quite actually quite um, present in my in my mind still now. Wow. It's a, it takes a bit of courage and uh, and a lot of open and openness and honesty to share that on the podcast. So, so thanks for that, uh, Gino. You're yeah, <laughs> um, yeah, welcome. Um, maybe we then look ahead or for another hour of pain then for, for a Sunday on the bike, <laughs> maybe with a bit more of a pleasant mood. <laughs> um, what do you hope to improve? Because I think you came 27th. Was it yesterday? Yeah, I came in 27th. But... Okay. Do you still have a bit of a goal to make top 20? Yeah, of course. I mean, <laughs> uh, I'm. I was having a look at the results, and I was like, oh, I'm as far from the back as I'm from from the front. So <laughs> to get a bit closer to the front, you know, making it into the first, uh, yeah, twenty. I think that uh, that's a nice goal. And then the other thing is just improve myself to see that. Um, that this race actually changed something in my uh, performance level as well and to see how well I'm going to cope with the pain and suffering um, on Sunday. And then test yourself against those other guys and getting a bit closer to uh, Rowan. Although we don't even sure if, if Rowan is actually inside or not, obviously. But uh... <laughs> <laughs> I hope he's going to race and I'm going to show him who's the master in <laughs> online racing then. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we're, we're going to pay attention to that and uh, we wish you all the best for that, uh, Gino. Um, thanks for your time to, to jump on the podcast. Much appreciated. Again, you are openness and honesty. You're welcome. Thank you, Rob, for inviting me. All right. All right, people. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed this one. Uh, great one with, with Gino Meder. Uh, if you enjoyed it, please leave a rating and a review wherever you listen to this podcast and tell a friend. It goes a long way to get the word out about the podcast. And so again, a massive thank you for listening. Stay safe, stay healthy, and of course, never stop cycling. This was Rob Bau with Gino Meder of Entity Pro Cycling. Stay tuned for the next Tax Turbo Talks. <laughs>